Hello everyone, sorry I look like a hot mess express. <laughs> setting we are um in my apartment at my college town because school starts in a couple of days and i had to come back home or to my apartment home um to get things situated before school starts so um that's what i did today today also today is day one of the historical romance readathon if you did not know that's the vlog for this <laughs> sorry i'm like a mess i'm tired i'm beat i still have so much to do today <laughs> basically what i have done today um is i woke up and packed up my car um to drive to my college town which is only an hour away from my parents house but then my dad went to get me gas while i was packing up other stuff and i've had car issues in the past the engine light went on and there's just been a lot of stuff going on with this car and so um he was like you know what put your stuff in my car i will go drive you to school um, and then I'll just drop you off and come back home. So it was very sweet and did that for me. So the only thing was I planned on getting some audiobook listening in while I was driving and that did not happen, but that's okay. Um, because my dad was very sweet and drove me here <laughs> and I'm very grateful for him. So I probably haven't read as much as I would have liked to today. I will hopefully finish this book by the end of the night because I have a giant to-do list to do and it's only 8 p.m. I have a TBR, but I'm not gonna tell you that TBR until I actually like start reading the book just in case I don't actually The one that I started today is Temptation of a Proper Governess by Kathy Maxwell. The reason why I wanted this one, or I saw this book, and nobody has read this book, as I know on Goodreads, um, is because I picked up the sequel at the bookstore the other day, and the cover is just gorgeous. And I noticed that the woman on the cover has a ripped bodice, and I don't have a lot of historicals that I have not read yet. Um, that have a ripped bodice on the cover. So I saw this and I was trying to find a book for that prompt in this readathon and I thought maybe if book two had ripped bodice maybe book one does and book one does. Obviously you can see by the cover um and so this is wait I just want to show you the step back for this one because it's so pretty and I wish I owned book one to know what book one looked like with the step back um, but book one was not in the store. I started this book today on audio. I am 25% of the way into it and this is going to fill those challenges for ripped bodice as I said before and at different social classes. I'm gonna read the summary for you because I do not have the like brain capacity to like tell you what this book is about off the top of my head so I'm just gonna read the summary for you. Society dictates that a governess should be modest, quiet, and keep to herself. She should never contradict her employer and above all she must not attract the attention of any male in the household. But Michael Severson doesn't see Isabel as a governess, he sees her as a woman one whose lush curves cannot be hidden behind a dotty gown, and whose efforts at hiding her sparkling intelligence are just betrayed by her wit. Years before, Michael had left Regency England falsely accused of a crime. Now he's back, dedicated to seeking retribution, but not to take a bride. But when his scandalous actions compromise Isabel's reputation, he does the unthinkable and offers her his hand. A marriage in name only. But although his bride's passions are untried, Isabel's sensuality clearly matches his own. And with each day and night that passes, Michael becomes determined that every kiss, every caress will be made with one goal, to seduce his proper wife into tender submission. I'm really enjoying this so far. It was a little hard for me to get into. Um, at first, I was very confused. I had to rewind the um, prologue a couple times just because I I think I was just having a hard time focusing but I am really enjoying this I've never read a Kathy Maxwell before so this could also fill the prompt for a new to you author but I have another book if I get to it um, if I don't then this will fill that challenge as well but I've really been wanting to read Kathy Maxwell because I absolutely adore her step backs I have a few of her books and the step backs are just absolutely stunning and I want to know what the inside of the book uh, looks like actually um, instead of just the step back and so I'm really enjoying this it's very entertaining basically our um, heroine is a governess she's governess to this 17 year old girl in this household and the household doesn't really like her like judges her because um, her house beforehand she was like put in this scandal and was like almost sexually assaulted by this man and this man didn't like stand up for her and this man kind of like 
spread some rumors around. Luckily she got this job, but these people don't really like her. And so the book starts out with um, these parents really wanting their 17 year old daughter to marry wealthy. And so they tell their daughter to go into um, Michael Severson, the hero, um, his bed and like basically look like like she's being compromised they'll walk in and they'll say she has to marry him because she's naked in his bed but isabel our heroine overhears this little planner finds out about it and she takes the girl out of the room like makes her leave kicking and screaming puts her back in her room and her her charge is like basically it doesn't matter i left my bracelet in his bed and i will be compromised either way and he has to marry me and um she's like not if i can help it so she goes and she like tries to find the bracelet in his bed and then he comes in the room and he's like infatuated by her and it's like i want you and then the other people like her boss essentially walks into the room expecting to see his daughter being compromised by this man so that she can marry him and it's actually his governess and um he fires her straight on the spot and um the book basically starts off from there with michael like trying to fix everything and like um, trying to make up for the fact that he's the reason that she is fired right now. I'm really enjoying this so far. I have to listen to the rest of it, hopefully the rest of it, um, tonight um, because um, I have a lot to do. I just moved back in and you don't even want to look at my floor right now. It is hot mess express. <laughs> I haven't unpacked anything because right when I got here I um, put away all my groceries and then I had to edit a whole entire video that will be posted tomorrow um, because my internet service at my um, parents house is literally horrible um, <laughs> so um, I had to upload here upload speed here is literally less than five minutes whereas my parents house if I were to upload something it would literally take ten so <laughs> 10 hours, not 10 minutes, 10 hours. If you hadn't noticed, I didn't post a video on Wednesday, which was the 13th, and that's just because I literally had no time and um, I didn't have anything to upload. So uh, you probably did not notice. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get to reading this book, listening to this book, unpacking all my stuff. So let's get started. Hello, I'm in the same exact spot but it is many hours later um i just finished my first book for this readathon at 11:30 at night um it's the governess one i can't remember the name right now by kathy maxwell i really liked it i don't really know what i want to read it i'm thinking a 3.5 just because there's a big mystery plot point in here and i'm not a big mystery gal i don't really like mysteries mysteries don't really float my boat there you go and that was a big chunk of this book i really loved how you could see our hero grow from what the person he was before he met isabel most of the book was like focused on like the finding out who killed this woman because he has been blamed on killing this woman even though he's like i didn't kill her and so they're trying to figure out who killed this woman that was a major plot point in here i feel like more important in the book than the romance was so it's not necessarily my favorite thing i'm hoping the next book doesn't really have that because i feel like sometimes in historical romances if there's a mystery plot point in one of the books some of the other ones in the series don't have a mystery plot point so i hope that's what's in that one but yeah i'm thinking a 3.5 out of five stars not my favorite it was okay if you like like mystery aspects in your romances i feel like you'd really like this one because i didn't really see or i kind of saw who um the killer was but then again like i normally can figure it out and i'm normally never really shocked whenever the killer is revealed in mysteries that's what i've been doing i have cleaned my room as well as it's going to be cleaned and unpacked today because i am tired so i've been watching uh reading vlogs of some of my favorite booktubers recently i'm very very far behind in my watch later playlist i went out of town on vacation for two weeks my watch later playlist is over 300 now and i just got it under 100 during christmas <laughs> um so i'm very far behind um but i was watching people's videos and they were talking about how they really like to play games on their phone while they listen to audiobooks i love doing that too but specifically, I like to do, like, I don't know how to describe it, but, like, games where, like, like, you're taking care of things. So, like, I don't know if y'all ever played Heyday as a kid, but I did. Basically, you have a farm. <laughs> you can't really see it. You have a farm that you take care of, and, like, there are all the plants, and then there are all the animals you take care of, and, like, every day you check on them and feed them, and you sell goods, and... I'm obsessed with Heyday. I'm on level 44 
and like I got this when I was like in middle school and then um, I found my old account and have been playing it ever since. I'm really loving that one and there's another one where you can take care of dragons and that one's called Merge Dragons but yeah I really like that one. I used to really love Virtual Families on here. Not really my favorite anymore. I used to love that. There's I know that probably some of you don't care but if you're looking for games like these I love games like these because they can hold my attention so well. Well not like hold my attention so well to while I'm um, to where I am distracted by an audiobook, but like it gives me just enough like attention span to not be distracted if that makes sense. But yeah, I get these all on my iPad because they do take up a lot of storage on your phone. And plus the screen is bigger on my iPad and I can see it a lot better. There's a Virtual Families 3. <gasps> What's on that one? Oh, that's cool. I'm reading the reviews of like Virtual Families 3 and this person is saying how like they really like how diverse this app is compared to the other virtual families because there's virtual families one and two and they're saying how like in this one you can have same-sex marriages and like they're people of color because in the past ones there weren't people of color that you could choose from so i really like how they changed that obviously so i'm definitely going to be downloading this one and i'll tell you my thoughts if i remember anyways i'm gonna go download all that stuff um and I think I'm going to start my next book tonight, which is, I think it's called The Duke I Attempted by Scarlett Peckham. Um, I've heard great things about this book and this fits four challenges. One is recommended to you because Jen from the Book Refuge recommended it to me because I asked her what some indie romance recommendations were when it comes to historicals. So that's another prompt is indie. And I think new to you author and I think damaged hero. I think those are the four. Not new to you author. It's something else. I think, ooh, I think it's Marriage of Convenience, possibly. I think that's what it is. If that doesn't fit the bill for Marriage of Convenience, I'll just replace it with the book I just read because that was kind of a Marriage of Convenience. So I'm gonna go download these games, curl into bed, take a shower, no, first take a shower, then curl into bed and um, start this ebook. <laughs> My camera's at the same spot this whole time. There's not a lot of places to film. Um, in here because every surface is covered with something <laughs> so um, it's not like when I'm back in my parents house where I can just film anywhere Ooh, moving that um, so it is a new day it is Saturday um, my new post my new money posted <laughs> my new video was posted which is my December wrap-up so go check that out if you have not yet I talk about the 30 books that I read in December um, so yeah, then I um, ate breakfast, was chilling, cleaning up some stuff, talking to people on the phone that I haven't talked to in a while, and just did some stuff on my computer to prepare for school starting up in a couple of days. And then I went to the gym, and that's where I started The Duke I Attempted by Scarlett Peckham. Um, I read it on my iPad, that's what I sometimes do when I'm at the gym. I'll either play YouTube, watch YouTube, um, or read an ebook on my iPad. I'll flip in between the two if I'm getting bored because I'm like that, <laughs> and I get bored very easily. I am, I think, 30. 13% of the way through The Duke I Tempted, and I never told y'all what this book is about, so we're gonna read the summary together. So I think that's just what I'm gonna do for all of the books in this video, is just talk about, like, read the summary word for word, because my brain is not the capacity to remember what this is about at the moment. Having overcome financial ruin and redeeming his family name to become the most legendary investor in London, the Duke of Westmead needs to secure his holdings by producing an heir, which means he must find a wife who won't discover his secret, craving to spend his nights on his knees, or make demands on his long scarred over heart. Poppy Cavendish is not that type of woman. An ambitious, self-taught botanist designing the garden ballroom in which Westmead plans to woo a bride, Poppy has struggled against convention all her life to secure her hard-won independence. She wants the capital to expand her exotic nursery business, not a husband. But there is something so compelling about Westmead with his starchy bearing and impossibly kind eyes that when an accidental scandal makes marriage to the Duke the only means to save her nursery, Poppy worries she wants more than the title he is offering. The arrangement is meant to be just business, a greenhouse for an heir, but Poppy yearns to unravel her husband's secrets and to tempt the Duke to risk his heart. 
I am really enjoying this so far. I'm loving the plant stuff in here. My mom is a huge gardener, so I've always grown up with flowers and plants growing up all around me. That's where if you look at my old Instagram pictures where all like the beautiful flowers are in those, those are all from my mom's garden. <laughs> I love talking about garden and plants and everything because I actually know what she's talking about because my mom gushes to me about them. Like I gush to her about books and she gushes to me about plants. We both don't really understand it, but like we remember what the other person says. Um, and so I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I have not gotten to any of like the romance between the two of them and it's still like only 13% of the way through, but I'm really liking these characters and I want to know more. And I know that a lot of people love this book, but a lot of people feel meh about this. So it's kind of like all over the place. At least no, no one has given it below three. So I'm hopefully going to love this one. Um, I think Jen from the book Refuge, she's the only five star on this. Um, and she absolutely adores this and she's the one who recommended this one to me. I also got a package in the mail So we're gonna open that. Um, I already know what this is. I ordered a new agenda for myself um, I had the Kate Spade Barnes & Noble One that is, sells at Barnes & Noble um, That is like this and it has books all over the cover and that was my lifesaver last year um, and so I got another edition of it and this is the 2020 2021 mega planner from kate spade and um 17th month mega planner and i absolutely adore this planner if y'all didn't know i love planners i love notebooks i am a huge list person so i had to buy another one for the school year because the one i've been using for two years finally um served its use if that makes sense um so here is what it looks like. It's from August 2020 through December 2021. Um, so I can't use a couple of the months here because they already passed. But it starts out with some stickers you can put on the inside. You can't really see it, but they're shimmery. Um, and it's really cool. I love the thick pages in here. Here you can see all the months in like the side here. I love these because, ooh, that's cool. These pages are blue each month um you have the month listed save the date to-do list and anniversaries and birthdays and then you of course have an overall calendar for each month um and then this is what i need i need week by week giant sections like this um because there are so many things to do in the day there's so many things to do when it comes to schoolwork. um so i need like this section all of this is monday all the things i need to do on monday and I normally fill this thing up and I have a whole nother journal of things to fill out every single day. So mainly this is for school. This is for school work because there's a whole lot of stuff to do with school and work for me or work and school all in here. And I also put in scheduling for videos and stuff like that. I absolutely adore this agenda and um, I need to fill it out. I need to find out if my classes have posted their syllabi yet because I like to print them all out and then um, have a day where I sit outside and I fill my planner out with all the syllabi information. That is like a whole entire day for me that I love because I am a total list person. <laughs> That's what I do for fun. I'm going to go make something to eat, possibly start another audiobook. I kind of want to read the next book in the Kathy Maxwell series, but um, it's not on my TBR, but I kind of want to read it, but I also don't know. <laughs> I might save it for later. Ooh, you know what? Maybe I'll start A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. I think I might do that. That's the first book in the Spindle Co. series, right? But then there's also Elizabeth, Ho an Elizabeth Hoyt book that I want to read. There's just so many options. It is later in the day. It is nighttime. What I've been doing all day after I got back from the gym and everything is been listening to an audiobook that I will talk about in a second. And then I made a spread in my reading bullet journal. I'm hopefully planning on doing a um, like bullet journal, like, flip through video that's what i've been working on is my bullet journal all day but um here is my historical romance readathon spread so i just put my whole tbr here um i probably could have made these like little oval things smaller but i wasn't thinking um so i just went with it and then um i flip it over to the next page and there is my bingo board and then once I fill a book for the prompt, I'm going to put the book title there. And then book, I'm just going to list all the books that I read and completed down at the bottom. Um, also, that's like my favorite spread so far is February's. Um, so basically, this, uh, this is what I've been working on all day. I finished what I did with February and then I started on March. 
um, and I love marches so much. Um, so basically, how my bullet journal works is like I have like a beginning section with um, like random things like books to read in the year, goals and everything, five star predictions, Goodreads challenge and everything, and then it goes into sections month by month. And each of those are broken down and each month section has a theme so january has a theme march has a theme february has a theme and it's all based off of a color and a plant and i am obsessed with it i didn't like i don't know how i thought of this um but i i can't wait to show you all this but i really want to complete it and i want to set up all my spreads for all of my months um before i give you all a bullet journal tour because i'm just so excited also by the way brie from in love Words made this sticker on the front for me that is what i've been working on <laughs> i've done all the way up to march right here um and then i have to do all the other months um so while i did that today i completed and oh i completed another audiobook um so i thought i'd tell you all about that book so i started and completed and i just surrender by tessa dare here is the step back that's gonna fit the step back prompt um and i believe also it is for another prompt and i cannot remember oh it's shirtless man because he is shirtless and yes he is he is shirtless there's a shirt on top of him but he is still shirtless so it's gonna fill those two prompts this is the first book a part of the spindle cove series which i feel like i'm going to love more as i get into it this one was pretty good um i'll read the summary for y'all. Spindle Cove is the destination of choice for certain types of well-bred young ladies, the painfully shy, young wives disenchanted with matrimony, and young girls too enchanted with wrong men. It is a haven for those who live there. Victor Bramwell, the new Earl of Rycliffe, knows he doesn't belong here. So as far as he can tell, there is nothing in this place but spinsters and sheep. But he has no choice. He has orders to gather a militia. It's a simple mission made complicated by the spirited, exquisite Susanna Finch, a woman who was determined to save her personal utopia from the invasions of Bram's makeshift army. Susanna has no use for aggravating men. Bram has sworn off infuriating women. The scene is set for an epic battle, but who can be named the winner when both have so much to lose? This is a Tessa Dare book. This is the only series by her that I have not read yet. I've read all her other series except for this one. Um, and I feel like this is everybody's least favorite out of all of them. I don't really know. There is a wide range of um, opinions about this book on Goodreads. People giving it two stars, five stars, all in between. And I think I'm going to end up giving it a four stars because I did enjoy it. I found it very enjoyable. And I was thinking maybe 3.5, but then I gave the last book that I read in this readathon 3.5. And like, I definitely like this one more than that. So that's where I'm gauging it off of right now. I did really like this couple. Um, both of them were really stubborn, um, which is not my favorite quality in a person but i feel like that's being stubborn is human essentially so anyway um so i found this really funny at points um i really loved how sorry there's something on my foot <laughs> i really loved how um bram just started to become a total sweetheart to this woman but very reluctantly <laughs> very reluctantly and Susanna just wants to be loved no matter what because she has been hurt so much in her past her father i wanted to slap him silly because he loves his daughter but like he did some things that are really selfish <laughs> and like i was like dude can you can you can you just look and like pay attention to your daughter like hello i found this to be very enjoyable quite funny at points it's a tessa dare book there's going to be funny moments obviously and i really can't wait to continue on with this series because i really liked the characters in here and i can't wait to see like if his cousin has a book i'm pretty sure he does and his cousin made me cackle all the time and one thing that I loved in here was um their first night being there Bram's first night being there him and his cousin are staying in this castle and like nobody lives there but him or them and like they're starving they don't have any food in this castle and then like a little lamb just walks up to them and the cousin's like let's eat it and he's like and then Bram's like uh no let's let's wait off another one night and so then the next day Susanna comes to see him and she sees the little lamb hanging around Bram and she's like who's this and uh Bram's like oh that's dinner like it's gonna be our dinner and she's like oh hi I can't believe you named him his name's dinner huh and <laughs> So she had, so Bram, this big man, just has this little lamb following him everywhere named Dinner. And I love it. It is so cute. That was probably my favorite part of this book was just the lamb. Anyway, um, I am quite tired and 
I'm gonna go to bed. So, I know this vlog is kind of like lackluster <laughs> right now. I don't really have the same area to work with or things to work with as I do than when I live with my parents because they have like an acre of land that I can hang out in and read outside and everything and I could probably read outside here but like it's just different when like I'm with my parents and I can like film myself and I don't really care whereas there are people outside here who are gonna be like why are you filming yourself and yeah so um I'm gonna put this up I don't know why I was still holding it <laughs> I also realized like the duke I attempted I'm probably gonna only be reading that while I'm at the gym or later this week because school starts this week and I like to read ebooks before classes start so um that's probably what I'm going to keep doing because that's the only ebook that I have for this readathon so tonight I'm probably going to start another audiobook but I don't know which one it is so I'm probably going to tell you tomorrow because <laughs> this clip is very long okay everybody happy Sunday it is a Sunday yes yes it is Sunday school starts in two days because we have Monday off. I started a book, another book, an audiobook that is not on my TBR. I don't know why, I just, I'm feeling very slumpy right now. I'm not really, I love historical romances, but I'm not in the, like, mood for them. I've been binging alien romances recently, and so I haven't really been in the mood for historicals, so everything on my TBR right now just doesn't, like, jam with me and like a couple books that I've picked for my TBR a lot of people don't like them <laughs> like my friends don't like them that are on Goodreads like I was gonna read this Elizabeth Hoyt book and then like everybody gave it three stars I'm like well what's the point if I'm probably also gonna give it three stars and anyway um so I picked a new book that is not on my TBR it is called Return of the Rogue by Donna Fletcher I found out about this book because I got the third book um, at a very cheap price at a bookstore recently and the cover was beautiful and so I had to figure out what the series was about and so this one the cover is just gorgeous I actually also thought that maybe um, this could fill the prompt for recent release even though it's not a recent release but the audiobook is a recent release it came out last year I was wondering if maybe I could trick that prompt into that because I don't have any books so far that are on my radar that have come out recently that are historicals. I may do that. <laughs> I listened to this on audio and I really want to finish it today because I'm already super duper sucked in. Also Jen from the book Our Future has already read this. I didn't know that though and she really liked it. Okay. Marriage was her only means of escape. Though Honora Tanich came of age amid the mist, misty moors of the Scottish Highlands where warring clans battle to the death for the future of their wild land, Nothing frightens her so much as a lifetime trapped in the castle with her cruel stepfather. She is thrilled when a marriage is arranged to the son of a Scottish laird until her betrothed is revealed to be Cavan Sinclair. Though the savage warrior once saved her life, Honora knows no one can tame the heart of such a brute, no matter how finely chiseled his features or how enticing his eyes. After escaping his captor's cabins, only concern is protecting his clan from the menacing invaders who threaten at every turn. And his beautiful wife is a dangerous distraction, but in the face of a fiery passion, their reluctance will fade, and Cavan will discover that there is no greater strength than the power of true love. So the like first little chunk of this book um, is about our heroine when she's eight, and she ends up like getting rescued by this clansman. And so I, they didn't really talk about like the age difference. I just don't think that um, age gaps are really all that much talked about in historicals because it's not that big of a deal. She was like eight and he was a full grown man when he saved her. So there is an age gap between the two. Um, but again, it's not really addressed. So I'm about an hour and a half into the audiobook and man, our hero is very gruff. <laughs> He's the kind of hero that like he finds his wife or his significant other or person he's interested in very attracted but he doesn't want to be so he acts mean towards them or gruff towards them even though he's trying not to be he just doesn't know how to act around them <laughs> so i find that somewhat endearing sometimes but if they push it too far if they're too mean it turns me off so yes our heroine is mainly in this and wanting to please him so that her stepfather can like leave her alone um because her stepfather is a cruel jerk i am really enjoying the audiobook so far so i'm going to be listening to that while i clean up my room because i want it to be spotless before the start of school so that i can have a fresh clean slate in here so let's go do that okay so i finished return of the rogue by donna fletcher i think i talked about this book earlier today but yes i finished it and i ended up giving it four stars basically my review i talked about how this is my first like highlander book that i've re read in a very long time i love highlander novels so i found this 
really enjoyable because I love reading about Highlanders. And so our heroine, um, she wants to get in this arranged marriage um, because her stepfather uh, abuses her. So she, um, at the beginning, is very timid and shy and scared and will take any opportunity to escape him. She, of course, will marry whoever, like her stepfather asks, because she can't think anybody can be crueler than her stepfather. So I really love how you get to like see this woman just grow throughout the novel. Um, she's very shy and timid and scared and throughout the book you just see her like grow and become more confident in herself and learn how to protect herself and I loved that. Also I think I touched on this earlier how like the hero was very gruff and he's one of those heroes that is like kind of like mean towards her at the beginning um, because he's so attracted to her and doesn't want to be and so I really loved watching him become a total softy for her. Start to adoringly love her and dote on her and I loved that so I ended up giving this one four stars. It's not my favorite romance of all time um, so I ended up giving it a four. I completely strayed from my TBR again and decided to pick up book two in the series which is under the highlander spell i don't need to read the summary because i am about an hour left in the audiobooks so i'm finishing it tonight after this clip the hero in this book is the brother to the brother from book one i think each book in the series is going to be a different brother there's four books and there's four brothers so that's what i assume and this book starts out with him rescuing our heroine because our heroine is a like female doctor essentially and um that was very not known in that time period people accused her of being a witch and so the book starts out with him rescuing this woman from being burned at the stake she's literally at the stake about to be burned at the stake and he like goes on his horse and whisks her up and saves her and he does this number one he doesn't want a woman to be burned at the stake but number two um she has apparently knowledge or he's heard that she has knowledge about um his missing brother's whereabouts so she takes him to her village where she last saw the brother and it's like they're relationship and then people start accusing her of witchcraft again so then he tells her that they have to pretend to be married so like people will believe him because everyone will believe a man and not a woman and they talk about it in the book how like that's not okay <laughs> and it sucks how that's a thing i'm really enjoying this one i'm not enjoying it as much as book one i don't think or maybe the same degree i don't really know one thing i do like about these romances um that i don't see a lot in romance that i absolutely love in romance is when the couple gets together there's a good chunk of their life after they get together like the book like the last chapter doesn't just end so like it's not like the romances that when they get together literally in the last chapter like for good like it's after they have their conflict and then the last pages them getting back together and blah 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 conflict resolved and then the book's over i don't like that i like when the couple like actually figures out everything um resolves their conflict way before the end of the book so that we get more of them after the book um that's why i really love certain um like classics like little women little little women does that perfectly with meg i love maggie because i get to see her go up and down in her romance struggles but she loves her husband and she's with her husband and you get to really see them after their whole love affair in the beginning of the book middle of the book anyway it's one of my favorites of all time that's why it's you can't even see it's displayed over there i also do like my new lights uh they're little hearts um i got it in a wonderful uh pr package from an author who contacted me on tiktok um if you're not following my tiktok it's linked down below but um i'm gonna be talking about the whole pr package that i got from that in an upcoming haul but i just love them and i had to put them on my bookcase so i did it anyway um i'm gonna go do a couple things and um climb into bed and play all my apps uh, on my ipad um while i finished this audiobook tomorrow is monday and it is the day before the first day of class ah. so um i had to get prepared for all that stuff so hello everybody um let's fix this shirt here um i am about to film some videos um it's earlier in the morning my roommates are asleep and so I don't want to bother them so that's why I try and film is this backwards yes that's why I try and film um, in the mornings um, because they're not really morning people I'm not really either but going to Disney kind of like messed up with my sleep schedule so now I wake up before 9 30 every day which was never a thing for me <laughs> I have decided I'm going to be picking up the next book in that Highlander series which is the angel and the Highlander by Donna Fletcher this is the book that I found at a bookstore that convinced me to like go seek out the first books in the series because this cover is absolutely 
stunning and I wanted to know what the other books were. So this is finally Lachlan's book in the series and I'm really excited because Lachlan is known in the series as being The Bachelor and The Womanizer. When Alice Banach's father tried to marry her off, she fled, taking shelter in Evergus Abbey, donning a nun's habit and renaming herself Sister Therese. But when Lachlan Sinclair arrives to restore her to her family, the safety of the convent is shattered. At the sight of the handsome Highlander, Alice fears for her freedom and weakens with desire. Lachlan has been tasked with finding shrewish Alice, but can think of only beautiful Therese. Yet with every forbidden touch, Lachlan comes closer to the truth. And once her secret is revealed, Alice must choose between the independence she's always craved and the tempting man she cannot resist. I absolutely adored this cover. That's why I bought it. <laughs> and um, I can't wait for this book. I really like Lachlan in the series and I really want to read this so I can also get to book number four. And book number four, I think, is about the missing brother, a part of this family. Um, and I'm really excited. I've just fallen in love with this uh, like family and I want to read more about them. So if you want to read like historicals that like each book is about a different family member, like the Ravenels, I feel like you'd really like this one. And it's also a Highlander one. So I'm going to get to filming some videos. I am filming a couple things today. So I'm going to go get to doing that and I will update y'all later when I've read something or I've done something else because all I'm going to be doing for a little bit is filming. Okay, I just filmed two videos and the intro or trailer video for my new YouTube channel which is my gluten-free related channel also don't you just love this cup maybe you can see it it's Belle I got it at Disney it's one of the only things that I could find from Belle like about Belle at Disney because like apparently she's not popular at Disney World which is insane but I filmed two recommendation videos for my channel two specific trope videos and the channel intro um, for the other channel. <laughs> I'm just like feeling this hair today. I used a different technique when it came to curling my hair. Um, this side's kind of gone flat, but like that's normal. My hair goes flat so easily. So yes, I have not read anything because I've been filming for the past couple of hours. How many hours? I don't know. I don't have my watch on me. I took it off. Probably gonna go put on my audiobook and clean up my mess because <laughs> I made a mess as you do whenever you film videos and then I'm going to import all of the footage to my computer and hopefully get started on editing because I want to have a backlog of videos uh, for when um, I start school up tomorrow which is crazy so that I'm not stressed um, because that was a big issue or is a big issue whenever I'm in school is trying to find time to film and edit and upload but also do schoolwork because schoolwork is literally my life that's all i do because i am a perfectionist and need to have a's in everything even though i probably don't but that's how my brain works um i'm going to go do all those things put on the audiobook and i'll tell you how i feel about it later on today hello everyone it is the end of the day and i'm gonna take off my makeup i finished a book today woohoo i finished the angel and the Highlander or the Angel for that? Where is the book? <laughs> Here it is. It is The Angel and the Highlander by Donna Fletcher. It is the third book in um, that series that I've been talking about. I think it's the Sinclair series. And this one is my favorite. It is five stars for me. <laughs> this one is so good. Like, I just loved our heroine so much in here. I did, like, have issues with um, the hero in here at points because he was so stubborn and somewhat some, a little bit misogynistic at points but just because he wanted to protect his wife i really liked this one i don't really remember what i talked about earlier in uh the vlog of like the summary and everything but like this one is just so much fun and i really liked this one our heroine has basically like been going by the name Teresa for a very long time and pretending to be a nun um, and living in this uh, little village or area of land um, with four other women who are escaping horrible things that have happened to them. And they're also pretending to be nuns. And so our heroine left um, because her father was going to marry her off, like put her in arranged marriage. And she's the type of person who is very stubborn and headstrong and doesn't want and wants all control over her life. And so she couldn't stand the fact that her father was going to control who she married. And so she left and then pretends to be this nun um and so our hero tries to find her because apparently he thinks that she has information about his missing brother and i also can't wait for book four because book four is about the missing brother and i'm so excited and then like he starts developing feelings for her and he's like i can't like this is so sinful and wrong she's a nun when she's actually not a nun um <laughs> it's about them like finding out they have feelings for each other and him like realizing that uh she might have lied to everybody um and him trying to understand 
like the real reason why she lied and like him also realizing like yes he's protecting her in certain aspects but that doesn't mean that he should control her and not give her a choice in certain aspects so i really liked his journey and like figuring all of that out for himself i also just loved how resilient our heroine is in here she was amazing i got a couple things done today that i'm very proud about i did my nails today i got finally i got an email about uh, my first class for tomorrow at 9 25 um in the morning and it's 12 30 so i need to go to bed um, but it's on zoom because I was really worried because like I got no message from any of my professors like in the last couple of days and like a bunch of the classes are on zoom and I'm like well are you gonna like do something online they're, they're not on eCampus or canvas and I have no emails from them I'm like if we're on zoom like where's the zoom link like like I need a zoom link <laughs> finally um, well at least one of my classes has um, emailed us about a zoom link tomorrow so I have the first one I don't know about the one that's later on in the day we will see I'm kind of nervous but it's kind of like good that tomorrow's all online for me so like I don't have to stress about packing up a backpack or um, setting out clothes for myself that are cute or something because like I can just literally roll out of bed and open up my computer and be in class I also made a bunch of thumbnails today for my videos that I filmed today um, because I have totally gotten in like the thumbnail mood um, as you can see by the thumbnail for this video, I worked so hard on that because I recently watched, while I was at the gym, I watched Kayla from Books and Lala, her like whole thumbnail, hour and a half long video about her like trying out different thumbnails. And I'm like, I love these like methods that she's using. I want to try it. And so that's what I've been doing. I've been dabbling a little bit in different apps and websites to make these thumbnails and I'm actually having so much fun <laughs> and so that's what I've been doing hopefully you like them let me know if you like these thumbnails or if you want me to revert back to my old plain and simple ones let me know but anyway yes this is five stars um, I'm gonna go download book four and um, possibly listen to it tonight while I'm doing my iPad games to wind down because I need to wind down hello everybody um my hair is semi wet I got out of the shower a couple hours ago and it takes forever to dry so it's still wet <laughs> um so it's actually like the night night time it is 6 45 in the evening it's probably gonna be my only update for the day because today was a busy day today was the first day of school i had two classes today both were on zoom and both involve um like as i'm getting more into college or like as I'm progressing through my degree, I'm getting more confined into teaching-based courses. And so one's like learning to teach kids about math. The other one is uh, lesson planning when it comes to English. And then tomorrow I have an 8 a.m. <laughs> and I have two more classes after that. I didn't read a lot today because of that. When I wasn't on my Zoom class, I was getting a bunch of editing done. Um, I completely am up to date with this reading vlog, completely up to date, which I am so amazed by. Um, I have everything but the thing you're watching right now, or it will be edited by the time you're watching this, but I have not edited it yet. But I'm gonna probably edit this before bed so I can keep up to date, if that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, you don't care. But I did start the last book in the Sinclair Brothers series um, by Donna Fletcher. This one is about Ronan. Okay, so I'll read the um, summary for you. She will pay for her sins. After being freed from the hellish barbarians who held him captive, Ronan Sinclair knows he must return to his clan to claim his powerful heritage. But first he must destroy the woman who ruined him everything. Even as he seizes Carissa and makes her his prisoner, Ronan is tormented by memories of the woman he loved and lost, the gentle Hope, whose death by Carissa's hand he has sworn to avenge. Carissa knows nothing but survival. Raised by a brutal man, she shows only coldness to the world, but inside burns the heart of a woman longing for passion. Forced to hide her true self, from the proud fierce warrior, even as she dreamed of someday being his bride, Carissa would do anything to keep her darkest secret, but she could not hide the truth or her desires from her capture forever. So I guess this is like a kidnap romance. <laughs> and I'm like a, a little bit into the audiobook, uh, maybe like an hour. I have to go back and maybe listen to the chapter I was just on because I don't recall a lot because I think I was like listening to it earlier in the day when I was like doing stuff like I, I I went to go watch my sister's puppy while she went to class and I had nothing to do and while I was playing with him I was 
listening to that but like I was distracted by playing with him that distracted me a little bit too much and so um I don't remember a lot so I'm gonna have to go back a little bit but I am so excited I feel like this is going to be amazing I already have a theory for this book or a prediction for it and I think it's gonna be right um and then I read a little bit more of the Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Peckham at the gym today I read like another chapter and I don't think I can read ebooks at the gym anymore <laughs> like I got a huge headache afterward and I think it's like straining my eyes like the gym lights overhead are reflecting off my iPad and like reflecting like just making my eyes hurt and like I got a horrible headache after that or maybe it was me working out who knows hopefully tomorrow in between the classes that I have um, I can read that uh, when I'm not doing work that was assigned today that's due on thursday because i'm gonna be on campus for most of the day on monday wednesday fridays so i have to like pack a lunch because sometimes they don't have food for me to eat because of celiac disease and gluten i think that's gonna be my only update for the day because that's all i have to update you on and i really want to read more of the audiobook tonight i want to get that done as soon as possible but i also really want to read the duke i tempted but i have a really big issue with reading ebooks at night sometimes I fall asleep like I fall asleep and then it's not that interesting to me that's why I read ebooks a lot when I'm out in public so that I have something to do and then I will focus on that because why talk to people when you can just read a book you know <laughs> I am very nervous but excited about tomorrow I don't like wearing masks but I'm going to wear a mask because it is important to wear a mask but wearing a mask stinks like everybody knows that wearing a mask stinks you know um, but you, you gotta do it. You gotta be safe. Anyway, I'm gonna go make myself some dinner, edit this footage, and you'll probably see a clip of me from tomorrow. Oh, also, my new video will be posted tomorrow, which I'm very excited for, because it has, like, a new style of thumbnail that I'm so excited for people to see. Hello, everybody. This is the end of the vlog. <laughs> this is the last clip. And maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't, but I did not post a clip for yesterday, which was day six of the readathon. I was just really overwhelmed with school and I didn't really have anything to update with books. Uh, I didn't finish anything yesterday. I finished both books that I was reading today. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, today was a rough day it, it was is not fun so um i had to like switch some classes around um my first my second day of classes just a, a bunch of stuff happened to where i missed the first class period for um, one of my teaching courses today was my first day going to it even though the first class happened on tuesday but i missed it because of scheduling stuff and i had to um register for a new section in it and i just didn't go to the first one because i didn't know i had to but the professor was fine about it. i emailed her and everything but um today is my first time on it and i was on zoom for it because and it, it's an optional it's either zoom or face to face you can pick which one and normally i'm a face-to-face -face person but my solely online class ends 30 minutes before that one starts um and i can't book it 30 minutes in 30 minutes to campus can't walk there and like get in that room and within 30 minutes um because i don't live on campus it was just uh, i literally started like having like a panic attack while and disassociating while the class was going on because the professor was just talking about stuff that i was not comfortable doing at all which is like insane because i'm gonna be a teacher and i'm gonna talk to people and talk to students and talk to parents and everything but what this class like had in mind i had to talk to somebody i did not know at least once a week for a long period of time i have two jobs youtube being one of them that i dedicate a lot of time for it it helps me with paying for school and paying for living here even though it's a small amount of money and then i have another job with the school that takes that, that's 10 hours a week and then i have four other classes and i just kept thinking and thinking and thinking and catastrophizing and catastrophizing and not feeling good about myself and just getting super stressed out and um i started literally five minutes in literally started tearing up and the issue w i would have just turned off my camera and cried because that's what i do but the professor literally said at the beginning of class if you turn off your camera i will count you absent like your camera has to be on that's my only issue about zoom is like everybody can see you and this person this professor she seemed really nice but like she had all of our faces up on the screen for everybody to see and had everybody logged on zoom my name is first in the alphabet and so and i also think that 
I was signed down to Zoom pretty early. So I was like the first one on Zoom. Everybody could see me. The way my anxiety works is that I am a very tearful person. Um, I cry with just about everything, even if it's not sad, even if I'm just uh, not upset. Whenever I disassociate or I get really anxious or uncomfortable, I will cry. Like that's how my body works. I'm literally, I'm very uncomfortable right now. So I'm, I am tearing up right now um and this is not a healthy thing at all to do so trigger warning for i don't know i don't want to say self-harm because i don't like harm myself and like i will scratch or dig my fingers nails into my skin to prevent me from crying so i could focus on something else and that's how i also do my skin picking stuff and rip apart my cuticles and my nails and i basically <laughs> make myself feel pain so that i can focus on that instead of crying and i had to sit in class for over an hour like that on the verge of crying the entire time i did not pay attention to a word that woman was saying or how she was teaching and it just it was not fun and now i have marks all over my arms because after class i looked down at myself and i had scratches all over me and nail marks in my arms today was not a good day and so i immediately called my mom afterward and i needed to cry it out i needed to talk it out and so i did and i was like i don't want to be in this class i have so much stuff to do i can't dedicate that much time to this class it just i i was not i was so overwhelmed and so stressed and it's literally the first week of class and i was feeling this way and so i was like i'm gonna drop it and she was like do it do it do it my mom is fine with it but like i feel bad with myself because like i've never taken anything lower than 15 hours which is five classes and literally at the beginning of my college career i would take 18 hours a semester i'm literally i am 22 and i am barely a junior right now i know it's not that big of a deal but like all of my friends that i graduated with in high school are all graduating this semester and i i'm like that's how i should be i should be with them but school is hard i've dedicated so much time and effort into school and i I take school so seriously and I want to do the best that I can in it and it, it it took me so long to find the school that was right for me this is my third college and I'm barely a junior and this is my third college I like being really dramatic right now I know um I'm just really in my feels I kind of feel bad for dropping the class but I also don't because I know it's probably way better for myself but now I'm at 13 hours and that just adds another class that I have to make up at another time. School just sucks and I hate it and I wish it wasn't this hard. Like I wish it wasn't. You wouldn't think that getting an edu education degree would be hard. Anyway, we're gonna talk about the two books that I completed and then wrap up this uh, vlog and wrap up the readathon. <laughs> Sorry for the sad ending but I'm really in my feels right now and today was just for me okay since i last spoke to you i finished two books the first one being the highlanders forbidden bride by donna fletcher this is the last book a part of the sinclair series so i completed a whole entire series during this readathon and i'm so happy with myself for that because i loved this series it was so much fun this one is about ronan the missing brother a part of the sinclair brothers and he finally pops back up in book four and i loved his story i only ended up giving it four stars just because um once the couple like got together it fell a little bit flat for me compared to the other ones in the series it was still really exciting and intriguing and this one just didn't live up to the other ones when it came to when the couple finally got together because the thing that i love about the this series is that you get to see a large portion of this couple's life like more than a third of the book is left after they like get together with the final conflict resolved and everything and i love that because i really like that in romance books i know not a lot of people do but i do this one is about ronan and our heroine and i can't remember her name right now it starts with a c i don't remember um but she is the daughter of the barbarian that you meet in i believe book one um so she's like the daughter to this evil 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 man and so her family has always hated her because she's her father's daughter and long story short ronan ends up like kidnapping her and they might fall in love and it's kind of like a mistaken identity as well because ronan was captured by her father and while he stayed there he was blind because he was beaten so bad his face was swollen and while he was there he fell in love with one of the slaves that was there 
um, named Hope who would take care of him. And our heroine may or may not actually be Hope. <laughs> Even though he hates her, but he's in love with Hope. It's like, he doesn't know that that might be the same person. So I really liked that aspect to it. I loved that. So yes, I gave this one four stars. And then I also read The Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Pecka. Now this one is very interesting. I finished it a couple minutes ago and I already wrote my review for it. And I ended up giving this one a 3.5 out of five stars, which is so sad. I wanted to love this book more than I did, but it was really, it took so long for this couple to get together, like so long. And then once they did, it was full of fighting. <laughs> and I'm not the type of person or reader that really likes to read that kind of stuff. That's why um, The Beast of Beswick by Emily Howard, that's another historical romance that people really like. That's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. I gave that one three stars because that's all the couple did was fight and I just couldn't stand it. And so there was a lot of fighting in here and a lot of disagreeing and a lot of harsh words thrown at each other. And I don't really like that. <laughs> the thing that I loved about this book was Poppy. Poppy was our heroine. I adored her. I love her so much and I really loved her passion for plants. I've never read that really in a heroine before. I just loved her passion for it. You could like see it off the page about how much she loved plants and how much she loved caring for them and all the plants that she had for them and it was so much fun to read about. I loved that. My main issue with it was Asher. <laughs> Asher is I just don't think my kind of hero. Sorry Jen, I know you love this book so much and I love you for it but Asher he's not my kind of hero he's not a guy that floats my boat I I'm not a big person into really damaged heroes because he is a damaged hero like he mm, he's a damaged hero he goes through some stuff that is really really hard and the way that he copes with it is by going to this place to get whipped for pleasure and he keeps it a secret from Poppy for so long and it just got annoying after a while of him just not confiding in her even though he knows that he can trust her and it just got on my nerves <laughs> i also expected this book to be way steamier than it actually was <laughs> like i would expect it to be it just it wasn't as steamy as i thought it was gonna be but that's all on my fault i had unrealistic expectations i guess but one of the main things i loved in here though was the consent the consent in here was sexy it was so good like mm, the way that he kept like checking up on her like when he was about to do something like it was sorry i got excited it was it was good it was really good y'all i know my rating of 3.75 is really specific but that's just the way that i feel so i'm gonna leave it at that <laughs> so let's wrap up this readathon this vlog in total this week i ended up reading seven books i'm gonna list those books off for you and then tell you what prompts they filled i ended up getting bingo three times technically two but i counted a book as a prompt that i feel like fits the prompt in my mind but it probably doesn't but we'll talk about it in a second so i just talked about the duke i attempted so i'll tell you which prompts that one filled that one was recommended to you and indie published and then i also talked about the highlanders forbidden bride that one only fills one prompt which was damaged hero and so for other books uh, we have Return of the Rogue by Donna Fletcher, and this one I ended up giving four stars. And this one fills the prompts for new to you author and recent release, which is my iffy one. The recent release is coming with the audiobook. The audiobook came out in 2020, so I listened to the audiobook, so technically <laughs> the audiobook was a new release. <laughs> then I have Under the Highlander Spell by Donna Fletcher, which is book two in the Brothers of the Sinclair Brothers series. And this one fills the prompt for Marriage of Convenience. And then I also read The Angel and the Highlander by Donna Fletcher, the last book a part of the, the last book that I'm going to talk about that it's part of the Sinclair Brothers series. And this one fills the prompt for blue on the cover. And I also read The Temptation of a Proper Governess by Kathy Maxwell. And I ended up giving this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. And this one fills the prompts for different social classes and ripped bodice on the cover. And lastly, I read A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare, which I gave four stars. This one fills the prompt for shirtless man on the cover. Then we also fill the prompt for has a step back. And this also fills the prompt for used book. I got this at a half price books. 
I assume it was used. <laughs> I also forgot to mention for the Sinclair Brothers series, I gave all of them four stars besides this one, which I gave five stars to. So those are the seven books that I ended up reading this week. I absolutely adored this week, reading all these books this week. I probably wouldn't have read them for a very long time if I hadn't had this motivation for this readathon. So I'm very, very thankful for Lacey, Lisa, and Jessica to put on this readathon. It was so much fun. So let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all